Welcome to A Safe Place with Ellen. Today, we kind of want to start, I'm going to call it a little mini-series. We're going to talk about uh, some coping techniques, some things that are going to get us through the day when maybe no one's there, some things maybe even at night when we get anxious that we can do alone and just make us feel more comfortable, relaxed, and get over that spell of anxiety or fear or maybe even depression that we're having. Today, we're gonna to talk about grounding techniques, just some techniques that will help us uh, when we are feeling anxious or really, really stressed or that we are going to a place where we may know that something's going to trigger us. And grounding techniques are things that you can do that no one else really has to know that you're doing, that you internally can do to help calm down and maybe not have such a negative trigger to whatever situation that you may be going into. Grounding techniques are exercises that we do to help us refocus on the present. We may be thinking back to issues of the past or again be triggered by something and maybe having a flashback. Uh, grounding techniques help with some PTSD. It's exercises that, that you can do that's going to, it's going to bring you back to the present and, and you're going to be able to refocus and know that what's happening now is happening now, not the thing that triggered you or the flashback. There's different types or different techniques that you can use in grounding. This first technique we're going to talk about is physical grounding. Okay, it's like um, you could, it's things you could do like with your hands. You can, you're, you're, let's say you're in a bathroom and you're triggered by something. You can turn on the water, okay, and you just touch the water. And what you're going to do is, you're going to feel, you know, you're going to think about what the water feels like, the temperature of the water. You could even focus on, you know, the color of your bathroom. Just your, and grounding is, remember, it's going to bring you back to the present. So it's things that are actually happening, happening now. So you're going to feel the water, the temperature, and you're going to breathe. You're going to, you know, maybe the temperature is, it was cold at first and then it gets warm. Uh, you're going to listen. You're going to listen to the water coming, you know, as it's coming out of the faucet. It could be fast. It could be slow. You're going to focus on those things because what you're doing is you're bringing yourself back from a possible flashback or a trigger to the present. And really what we're doing is we're, we're, retraining your brain you know because flashbacks they're they're in the mind it's it's a mental thing so we're going to bring ourselves back mentally to the present so that anxiety and that stress isn't so strong because then you're going to realize this is where you are in keeping in touch with the physical grounding and uh, using the hands or touch We'll say you're in a doctor's office or you're, you're around people that remind you of a very stressful situation. Well, you can use things around you. You can, you can like touch a desk. You can, and in touching that desk, you know, remember you're thinking, you're, you're looking at it, you're thinking, you're feeling the texture of it. It's a smooth desk or it's a rough desk. Uh, the wood may feel cold, you know, the color of the desk. And what you're doing is you're rethinking. You're not thinking about the stressful situation anymore. You're thinking about the, the desk. You're thinking about the chair that you, you're in. You know, it may be a cloth chair. So it may be a chair with rough. So you're, you're, you're refocusing on, on this chair, on the, the environment that you're in. It, it may be a metal chair. So again, you know, it could be, your, it could be the, 
the warmth of the chair, the coldness of the chair. And remember, we're still, we're focusing on our environment. So we're focusing on the desk or, or the chair or the material or even papers in your hands. And you may wander back to whatever that situation is that you're in. If it's the people are, that are around you that are triggering you and you've got to just think, okay, no, I'm thinking about the desk. I'm thinking about, you know, you may get a Kleenex and feel the Kleenex. You may have soda you, and you're gonna feel the heaviness of the bottle. So do you see what we're doing here? We're literally taking things in our environment and thinking about them differently because when we drink a Coke, we don't think about how heavy it is. So you think about how heavy the Coke is, how smooth, and maybe even how the, the paper on the, the bottle is different than the bottle itself and how those are the things, that's grounding techniques because it's all about the mind and we're trying to refocus our mind onto something else as opposed to whatever that situation is. And you know guys, sometimes we'll tell our kids that we all all up in the papers about something. What do we say? Don't think about that. Do this. Or we also redirect our younger kids, don't we? They want this cookie. They want it and they're throwing a fit about it, but what do we do? We redirect them. Oh, come over here and look at this. Do you see? And we're just doing the adult version of that. And we can do that with without people noticing. You know, that's the thing, because it's an internal and a mental thing, which is great. I mean, no one wants people to know, because that's part of the fear, right? Part of the fear and the anxiety is people are gonna see how I'm reacting to this. So just remember, when those things happen, you can do these techniques. You can, you can do them and no one will know. You know what? You can even get a friend, and you can practice them. I mean, things, when I say scent, it's scents, um, odors. You know, you can, you can smell how an office smells. Doctor's offices have their own smell. Uh, you can smell your own cologne. You could even carry around, if you wanted to, on a Kleenex, put some of your favorite cologne or um, patchouli oil is one of my favorite, and it just, it's wonderful. I can put it on a Kleenex, and, and it just takes me to a different realm. And you guys know how that is if you go into a, a department store and you smell all these colognes or you buy your favorite cologne and it just calms you down, you know, you focus on that. So, so scents are, are a big part of our thoughts and our feelings and the way we feel. We don't realize it, but they really are. So you can even use that as a, as a grounding technique. Remember, and I keep saying this because to me it's, it's one of the biggest positive things about doing this is, you know, you, you don't have to stand up and, you know, close your eyes and do those things. You can actually do this anywhere, anywhere that you, you could go to the bathroom and do it, you know. So it's one of those things that's, it's intimate to you to help you calm down. And if you're in a, even if you're in you know, you're in a, a domestic violence situation and things are, are kind of getting out of control, you know, and, and then the mind starts wandering and you get confused, do that. It'll bring you right back to the present. And then you're gonna see that you have control over your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Another grounding technique, it's called the five, four, three, two, one technique. And it's, you're, you think, okay, you're in a room, and name five things that you hear. Like, I hear things out in the hallway. I can hear the, the air conditioner. I hear someone just drop something out in the hallway. I can hear the, the air circling. Uh, and I can hear the computers. You know, you can, that, that's, you just focus, you know, and so five things that you hear, four things that you see, I see a picture on the wall, I see pink glass, blue curtains, the back of a computer, and then I think, okay, 
the blue curtains, you know, and I'm, I'm still in that visual, and, and they're, they're a, an ocean blue, which is very common. And when I, I look at the, this pink cup, which is, is common as well, it's a, it's, it's a vibrant pink, and the picture is a, of an owl in the woods. So those are the things that we look at, and remember it's five, four, so we pick four, and we're, we're focusing on those things. Then, then three things that you can touch, okay? So I can touch the chair that I'm in. It's got, it's rough, it's got a rough exterior. Uh, my sweater, and, and my sweater's soft, and I know that it's blue, so, you know, and, you know, blue's kind of a, a soft, it's a soft color, and, and even the papers that I have in my hand, and they're kind of sharp on the sides, and there's a lot of them, and it's thick. You see, so, and, and I'm talking to you about these, but if I was sitting and doing this, I would just be thinking these things to myself, okay? Because I want to ground. Now, I could do this in a doctor's office. I could do it, I could do it you know, in my mother-in-law's house, but I didn't like my mother-in-law. You can, you can do it anywhere for that anxiety that we're having and those triggers that we're having. And you know, domestic violence, we can do that. We can do that for those triggers. You could also really do these with addiction, you know, to, to bring you back to reality when you're, you're thinking of using or back to domestic violence when you think about the fact that you know you have to leave this person you love and how hard that is you, you know it's going to bring you right back to reality and those emotions are going to fade away they're going to come back but for the situation that you're in it's going to calm you down because we all know that those feelings that we have when we have to end a relationship that's not easy two things, two things that you can smell. I can smell um, a heated candle. I can smell my cologne. So those are two things that uh, that you can smell. And in some places, you know, there may be more than two, but remember we're going five, four, three, two, one, and then something that you taste. I taste my lipstick, you know, and if you're, you're eating, it would be anything you can you taste. Uh, you could taste salt on my finger, you know, those kind of things. So we do these five, four, three, two, one to ground us, and it does take a minute. Uh, you could, you Let's, let's do this. You could come into my office and you would be very upset because, you know, uh, you may have gotten back from court and that is definitely very distressing. And you had to see the person that you love that you're not gonna get to see anymore due to domestic violence. And you're, you're in tears. And you're just kinda, you're really distraught. These would be some things that we might do. We might talk and do, so we would do this, five, four, three, two, one. And what it does, and if you think about it, and, and practice these things, what it does is it's going to take your mind off a of court, and, and because it's, it would take some time, five, four, three, two, one, and you could back it up, and then do it again. You can do it as many times as you need to do it in order to, uh, to help you refocus on the present and not not what's triggering you. Hey guys, we're gonna wrap today up. What I want you to know is that this may not be for everybody, grounding techniques. It may not work for everyone. So, but there's a lot of techniques out there and we're gonna talk about some more um, next week and the week after. Um, we're gonna, our little mini series is gonna continue don't give up if this doesn't work just try it you know give it a chance and if it doesn't work you have to make it fit you 
There's a lot of, of these grounding techniques. You know, you can look it up online. You can call here. We can talk about them. We can do some over the phone. That's the great thing about these. You know, we don't have to be face to face. We can talk about them. So I'll see you next week. Tune in.